Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vasilis. Thank you. So, as I am the last speaker of the day, I'll take my time for it. <laughs> no, no, I'll promise you. No, I cannot promise that. Um, man, uh, my talk is called The Day at the Beach. And this story is actually about how I got 20 top-level managers naked, <laughs> stripping down their clothes in front of 100 colleagues in a temperature just above freezing point. And if I make it in time, within my 30 minutes, I promise you I have some graphic material to prove this. <laughs> Let's see. A day at the beach, is, it's actually uh, an expression. You say, ah, that's like a day on the beach, or uh, like a walk in the park. It is a metaphor for if something is easy and enjoyable. The thing is, and with this, I am already giving away the point of my talk here, things that look easy are not always that easy. So actually, I went to the beach with my seven-year-old son a few weeks ago, um, yeah, three, I think three weeks ago, uh, to the lovely exotic island of Tessel. And at the North Point, yeah, just below the red painted lighthouse, we hit the beach, and it's a large beach there. And from the moment we stepped in, his hand touched the ground, and he immediately started digging. Oh, wait, wait, zap, yeah, that's Luca. <laughs> I hope you make a picture. I'll tell him that I show it as but for uh, 200 people this today. <laughs> so this, this, <laughs> this playfulness is something we're naturally drawn to. He immediately puts his hand to the sand, he starts playing. At the same time that we, we were there, there were about 40 other people on that beach, just walking. You very rarely see 40 people digging sand at the beach with their very bare hands. This was actually not on that same day, this was half a year ago, and it was one of the videos that Wasile just talked about. Like 40 adults digging with their hands in the beach. I made them do it, and I made them do a lot of stuff more. I let them build sand castles, for example. And you know what? They love it. So, that afternoon with my son, we made a great sandcastle. And then we left it to be eaten by the sea, so that, that is the fate of sandcastles. But the magic was actually not in the finished product. The magic for us was not in the sandcastle. We built much, much more that day. So, people passing by, maybe later that day, might see the castle assuming it was built by some kid just for fun. The castle itself doesn't show how it's built or why it's built. We don't stop playing because we get old. We get old because we stop playing. Luckily, luckily, more and more people, companies and organizations nowadays see this. Playing and playfulness gets more and more accepted. It doesn't mean, however, that everyone fully understands what we're doing. So, I'm Michiel, you've met me today. <laughs> I'm 43 years old and I'm an experienced designer slash gamification designer. And so nowadays, most of the time, I spend on designing and playing experiences with groups of people and it's more in the realm of playful experiences that uh, Marigo touched upon this morning. And I do that with, with management teams from six people to workforces over 9,000. All of these experiences use ingredients from games. So you might see that I put gamification designer between brackets, and that's for the same reason that uh, Willem Jan Ringer just mentioned and that Marigo was talking about. And actually, is actually we talk about a lot in the gamification community. Yes, 
there should be a definition, because we have to know what we're talking about. Um, but it's good to take some other perspectives. So, oh, not, not yet, not so fast. Um, <laughs> So to me, what is important is to what purpose we use, uh, to what purpose you would use ingredients from games. Three and a half years ago, my boss, and he really doesn't like to be called boss, employed me as a gamification designer. So I asked him, what do you expect of a gamification designer? And he said, well, gamification, I expect you to make my learning programs more fun, and competitive. And actually, when I talk to one of my clients, this is about their expectation when it comes to gamification or their understanding. Fun and comp competition. That would be two, uh, two ingredients. Yes, they are two ingredients, but to the untrained eyes, things that look simple are not always simple. So, I love to get people to play. In the last 13 years, I developed, staged, and played for about 50, 50 different experiences for groups. And to be honest, when I started, it was mainly about fun. We positioned ourself, uh, ourselves as an event company, and we catered several groups a week. This, however, was a great opportunity for me, because I witnessed groups playing over a hundred times a year. And that was a very luxurious position for me. So I began noticing what happened when people were playing. Fun, I could see. Competition, I could see. But over time, I saw patterns emerging when people were playing. I saw the same things happening over and over again. Some of them I could pinpoint at that time. You know, fun I could see, competition I could see, and maybe some of the others. I, I could see problem solving, I could see work, hard work, I could see sweat. Later, others I learned when I got more uh, background. What do I do as a designer, as a designer of a game, the director or even the puppet master, to make this happen? I also noticed that these elements, to a greater or lesser extent, were in the fabric of every game. You could hardly say that a game was about communication, or that an event was about team building. There was way too much happening to just claim that. In the games and between people, and this is where I realized the great potential for my, for my purpose, for playing. And I discovered this great uh, quote by Plato. You discover more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. This is one of the biggest truth, truths I uh, learned over the last 10, 13 years, and I really love this one. So, before I had my event company, I had been in, uh, educated as a primary school teacher, and I've been giving training in retail for five years. Now, I saw the overwhelming potential of playing. So with so many things going on in my games, and especially between people, I knew there had to be some effects, some results. But the results, or impacts of the learning, whatever happened through games, it was not very explicit. There was a lot of potential, there was communication, a hierarchy, teamwork, a but there's more and more and more and more. There was a lot of potential in games. None of them were very explicit, but that doesn't mean that they are not there. So, as you can see, it already gets pretty clouded. There's a lot of magic happening in and during games. There's a lot we can learn from it. But it's not very clear. Sometimes things that look simple are not really always that simple. Because the thing that people see is a bunch of adults playing a game, digging with their hands in the sand, building a sandcastle. That's what others may see. I see a game. 
Last year, I made a game called Into the Woods, and actually I did one spin-off version that was called Onto the Beach, um, where I had hundreds of people running through the forest in the Into the Beach vers version. They were battling each other, forming alliances, sabotaging, shouting, singing, pushing their boundaries like there was no comfort zone. And we actually had people stripping to the bone in front of our 100 colleagues in a temperature just above zero freezing point. Others might just see a bunch of people building a sandcastle. I see people playing a well-constructed game. A game where a lot of magic happens, stacked with observable behavior, with a great potential for massive results. So, to get some clearness in all this, you need focus. And this is where the real magic happens to me. So far, you've been playing a game. You've built a sandcastle. And then, to me, you use a lens, the lens, the lens of reflection. Directly after the game, you look back. You look back on what happened during the game with the people who played it. And for this, you will need a facilitator, someone who is there, someone who understands and can pinpoint what they observe. This facilitator is the one who sets the focus. If you just played a thrilling game with your team, and you ask, what was this game about, you will probably get a list of over 20 items. You can easily write two flip-overs uh, full of possible answers. And although the game could have easily been about those 20 items, you might just want to focus on one or two of them. So if you want it to be about company culture, the game was about company culture. If you wanted the game to be about bridging the gap between team interest and company interest, the game was about that. If your game was about diversity and inclusion, then you focus on it and your game was about diversity and inclusion. As a great trainer, as a great educator, as a great facilitator, you can ask the right questions and steer towards specific results, a specific impact by asking the right questions and by starting with the result in mind. So this is what we do. This is, the, this is the place, and you've heard it sometimes today, this is the place where all good gamification starts, at the red dot, at the end. First, we want to define what the outcome should be. What is the behavior we want to change? What's the patterns we want to break? What problem would you, do we like to address or even solve? What insights do we want to give? What do we want to move in people? It starts with that red dot. And from there, you work your way back. At this point, you start to build a game. And I can assure you, it's not enough to use the elements competition and fun. Game designers and gamification designers use a wide array of ingredients. Just like when you go to a restaurant, you can assume that the chef in the kitchen uses more than just salt and pepper and water. Gamification designers can choose from a wide variety of elements, mechanics, dynamics, design tools. And I'll show you right here. This little picture happens to be the, the periodic table of uh, gamification uh, elements by Andre. Hi, Andre. You would recognize it. Um, but it's just one example. Already today, we've seen so many great examples. Um, and I know the people who are here who laid the groundwork. Um, I use things like the gamification design deck by, gamific by Gamification Nation, by N. I use the playful card-based tools for uh, gamification by Marigo Raftopoulos. I use the card deck by Bernardo, who was just spoke before. I use the playful design uh, canvas by Willem Jan Renger. I use the game-based learning design wheel by Karen Sikema. I use them all. And just like the chef in the kitchen, it's not just enough to know the ingredients. It's to know what happens when you put them together. It's all about balance. And it's also about experience. If I put a certain ingredient into a game, let's say sabotage, I really like sabotage in a game. So if I put in the option to sabotage other teams, I do that under a number of conditions. And because of experience, I can foresee to a certain level how and when people or teams will sabotage. I define to what level I allow sabotage, the risk it will cost, the effort and the penalty I will give. 
I have to take all kinds of conditions into account. The people, the player, the types, the cultural differences, current status. And this is basically one element I'm talking about. In the context of the game, the observable behavior I get from it, the way I want to use it in the reflection and the result I'm aiming for. Meanwhile, you have to anticipate a lot of scenarios. What could happen during these games? And you will also, also always be surprised. You need to know about game design, psychology, behavioral e economics, team dynamics, etc., etc., etc. If you just walked in here, by the way, and you saw this picture, you would probably either be impressed or daunted, or both. Things that look simple are not always simple. This is my kind of gamification design, and as you can see, it is not exactly a day on the beach. It may look like it, but the next time you see people building a sandcastle, it might be that they're just playing around and having fun. Or, without them even knowing it, maybe, they are building a better future. I'll keep it at that. Thank you. <laughs>